Hey everyone, it's Cass and it's been a minute and I'm going to do, I guess, a really awful job at wrapping up my challenge that I started at the beginning of this year, which was to read a book every month with the name of the month in the title. And <laughs> out of all of the books, there's only two that I liked, two, three I DNF'd and December's I didn't even pick up. Um, and we'll get there in a minute. I'm filming this at the beginning of September. I am currently 35 weeks pregnant while I'm filming this um, and having Braxton Hicks pretty consistently. Um, I, by the time you see this, I will have almost probably a two month old, um, but I wanted to film this and get this out of the way and read the books and get everything done so that I can take time, you know, to have a baby and then just focus on that. Um, as you can see behind me, I'm prepped with cloth diapers and clothes and bath stuff and baby stuff. Um, but without, I guess, any further ado, let's go over the books. I <laughs> am really awful at remembering really anything about most of them, um, but I'm gonna do my best I am not a um, book talk bitch here, but I love reading. <laughs> so that's all I really have to say about it. Um, I already have a challenge I picked out for myself for next year for reading. Um, and it's going to be all of the top or the nominated top books of 2022. Um, in all the different genres, or at least 12, so one a month, and I currently have them sitting over here on a shelf. Um, I already bought them off thrift books, so at some point in January, you'll probably see a haul. Um, but yeah, originally with these books, I think I had the intention of either like filming a mid-year review or just filming more of like a what I read every month type kind of video, <laughs> I think was my original idea. Um, but I got pregnant in January, found out the very first week of February, and by the second week of February, um, I got extremely sick with something called a severe hyperemesis, um, which led to me in and out of the hospital, barfing 10-15 times a day, losing 30 pounds, like just really dramatic stuff. Um, you could go back to my, the only video I've really talked about being pregnant in. Um, and I kind of went over some of that stuff in there. Um, I'll maybe throw up a little shot of my 35 week belly. Um, I'm pregnant with a girl. I'm due October 16th. I don't think I'll make it to my due date just based on how things have been recently the last like week or so. Um, and I've recently been like hella breaking out, which is not something that ever happens to me. Um, I love how I said without further ado, and I've continued to talk for almost four minutes now. So <laughs> let's go over the books. That's honestly, I have to look at my Goodreads to remember my ratings on these. Um, I ended up rating The 10,000 Doors of January five stars. This is by Alex E. Harrow. She also um, wrote The Once in Future Witches, which I tried to start, but I had to stop at some point in this year. Um, I just wasn't getting into it, but this, from what I remember, which January feels like a lifetime ago <laughs> with everything that's happened in this pregnancy, um, but this was an easy read, this was a fun read, it was, uh, from what I remember, uh, like, portal fantasy, um, I guess, yeah, I would call it that. I don't, I think I started to write, I told myself I was going to write like better wrap ups about these books. Yeah, I wrote a little note of this is uh, magical realism and portal fantasy, um, 
which was 365 pages, which I felt like literally was perfect considering it's a year book challenge I was doing, 365 days, this was January. So I'm pretty confident this is my only five star read of the year so far. Like I said, when I'm filming this, it is actually only the beginning of Jan or January, it's not the beginning of January, it's the beginning of September. Um, and my goal was only 24 books this year after I found out I was pregnant. I wasn't trying to go crazy. Um, and I've read 20 so far. But, five star, highly recommend, absolutely. So happy I found this. And I think probably the only one out of all 12, maybe one more that I'll end up keeping, but this one for sure. And all of these books, I believe I got on thrift books as well. Um, I think I have like a a code or something that you can get like five dollars off with. <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> February flowers. I gave this a two star. Um, I think I wrote something about this. I wish I had done it more. No, I didn't. What I would say of what I can remember about this is the dialogue in this drove me crazy. I didn't care. It was melodramatic at best a lot of times, I feel like. Um, it's a coming of age kind of story from what I remember. Um, and one girl, let's just call it what it is, she sells her body but calls it modeling. And if I remember correctly, they're both like in college and it's just coming of age of like the more naive girl, which is our main character, kind of living through and experiencing and and in the shadows, I guess, of this more promiscuous girl and just things through life um, and unfortunate things that kind of happen to the other girl throughout the story, um, but most of this I found extremely boring. Like I said, the dialogue started to kind of ruin it for me. Um, I feel like if you took out all of the dialogue between the two girls, this is how big your book would be. Um, and I feel like it went on a little too long. Um, it calls it insightful, sophisticated, and rich with complex characters. February Flowers captures a society torn between traditional and modern entity, dogma and freedom. It is a meditation of friendship, family, love, loss, and redemption, and how a background shapes a life. So I don't necessarily disagree. It just definitely was not. It was not the book for me. It wasn't awful. It just, it didn't do anything for me. That's for sure. So I gave it two stars. For March, <laughs> the book is literally called March by... Um, Geraldine Brooks. I also gave this a two star. Um, from what I remember about this book, um, it says, as the North reels under a series of unexpected defeats during the dark first year of the Civil War, one man leaves behind his family to aid the Union cause. Um, this really, not that I don't, I don't think I needed it to, but this really sealed the deal that reading about war or war events or war times is not for me. Like historical fiction, anything in that realm is, is not for me. Um, this was extremely boring and very difficult for me to get through. I didn't care about the story, thus I didn't care about the characters and I'm always forever and ever going to be anything pretty anti-war related. It's just, there's a number of reasons and I'm probably not gonna discuss those like in depth right here. Um, it just definitely was not the book for me and extremely, extremely boring. <laughs> also, April's, <laughs> without needing to re-justify, romance is not my thing. This was so boring. <laughs> this is Snow in April by Rosamund Pilcher. I gave this a two star. 
romance is not my thing. This entire book, again, is I guess apparently I struggle with dialogue. It doesn't do a lot for me. This just goes on and on and on <laughs> and romance and yuck and I didn't like it and it was boring and I don't know. It says Caroline travels to Scotland hoping to make contact with a brother she hasn't seen for years and return in time for her wedding to the man her strong-willed stepmother thought so suitable. Then a sudden snow strands her in an isolated house with a young man recovering from tragedy. Both are on the brink of a terrible mistake, but perhaps they can save each other. Two star, would not recommend, would not reread. And again, I didn't need it to confirm for me that romance is not my thing. I knew that going into these though, I knew that about the historical war related book. I knew that about the romance, but when I was going through and coming up with this challenge and buying the books off of thrift books, I was limited on what I could find with the titles of the months, and the months in the titles of the books. Um, you know, so I kind of had to do whatever I had to do limited with within a certain realm. Um, May, May's book was book one in a series. I don't know how many there are. Um, May Bird and the Ever After by Jodi Lynn Anderson. This is a middle grade. Um, it was okay. Let's see what I rated it. I gave it a four star. It wasn't a bad read. It wasn't awful. It wasn't what the other books are. Middle grade is easy to read. It definitely, I could see my niece like having enjoyed this when she was like in elementary school for sure. Um, she's a cool character. It just started to, I don't know. It just, I don't know. I think it went on too long and the fact that it's a series, I can't imagine what else the series goes into. I won't be continuing it and I won't be keeping the book. Um, but four star. And then June is the only other book that I even remotely semi enjoyed. I don't know what I rated this. I gave this a four star as well. It's funny that I gave it a four star because I can't even remember, excuse me, what the book is about. And I didn't get this one at Thrift Books. I got it at Goodwill. Uh, it says, for as long as Jack June O'Donnell has been alive, her parents have only had one rule, stay away from the Angert family. But when Julie collides, quite literally, literally with Saul Angert, sparks fly and everything June has known is thrown into chaos. Um... As their connection grows deeper, they find the magic ghosts and coil woes of the Five Fingers. I'm not going to read the whole synopsis, but literally, <laughs> as I was like, I hate romance. This was easier to digest because the whole story wasn't about their romance and they don't really kind of have one, to be honest. Um, I feel like this is definitely YA, though. Um, it tiptoes around with ghosts in magic but not in like a spooky sense literally at all um i don't think any of it's spooky the imagery that it gave in the book the way that the story was told it was an extremely easy read i got through it in two days and it's how many pages it's uh, almost 400 this is a very easy read um but yeah i'd say like a Magical realism, middle grade, not not a middle grade, a YA, I would say. This was the only other one I was considering keeping, cause I don't know if I'd actually ever reread it. So this one's up in the air. Oh, and then we're back to junk. <laughs> I believe this was a DNF, yes. July, July by Tim O'Brien. This was a DNF for me. What can I tell you about it? It's about a call. Here we go. It's the college class of 69 coming back together 
and I didn't make it that far into this because it was their high school reunion. I think it was their 30th? Yeah, their 30th high school reunion of them coming back together and it was like everything that you thought it would be and I had no interest. Um, <laughs> is everybody complaining about their life and the people how they thought they would be different, how they wanted their lives to be different, and everything was extremely, had like a negative tone to it. And because I wasn't born in the 60s, or not that they were, they were in high school in the 60s, but because I wasn't, <laughs> because I wasn't in high school in the 60s or 70s, a lot of this really had nothing I could identify with or connect with. And it really just put like a salty bad tone in my mouth of everyone just complaining about not only their own lives but everyone else's life from their high school reunion. <laughs> and so I DNF'd this pretty quickly. Would have given it a one. Do not recommend. Light in August is my August book. I gave this a two star. I would have DNF'd this, but the only reason I didn't is because it's a novel by <laughs> William Faulkner, and I wanted to be able to say that I'd read one. <laughs> That's the only reason I pushed through this book. I feel like I got so lost in this. Not that it was I don't know, his writing, how do I put this nicely? His writing was almost too focused on trying to sound extremely top tier, educated, poetic, saying things just to sound fancy. I, I honestly can't even tell you much about what this is really about. Um, I struggled through this. I forgot things that I was reading. I tried to go back and reread things at some point. I just hit a point of, I don't give a shit. I just want to get through this so I can finish it. Um, so everybody praises him. Um, this might be the only book I ever read by this man, so <laughs> especially based on this, I don't have an interest to seek him out or his books out or anything that he's written out, and maybe I am entirely wrong and uneducated in that stance, but this was hard. September's book, The Last September by Elizabeth Bowen, was a DNF. I don't remember why. Mm, I do remember why. If I remember correctly, I mean it says the last September is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bowen's timeless portrait of a young woman's coming of age in a brutalized time and place where the ordinariness of life floats like music over the impending doom of history. This is based in 1920 in... I believe um, Ireland during the war. I don't know anything <laughs> about any of that. It is also a war story. It is based in a country about a war that I don't really know anything about. I am awful with history. Um, yeah, it says the end of the British rule in the south of Ireland. Uh, this this I just couldn't do. It's not that the writing was bad, I just didn't have an interest in the topic. Don't know anything about the war. Um, don't connect with it in any kind of personal way because I'm not from, you know, the UK or Ireland because I believe that she's resettled in the UK, if I remember correctly, to escape the war. Um, yeah, I just, it's not that long, I could have. I almost made it halfway through, um, but I just had a whole moment while trying to plow through these books. Like I said, this would be the book I'd be reading this month. Um, but I plowed through this because 
or the whole reading to get it through and done before my pregnancy was over. But I just like hit a point of like, why? Especially after Faulkner, especially after DNFing July, July, like especially after not enjoying most of these books, I just like hit a point of why am I still reading this if I don't want to? Um, you know, for me personally, that's a hard thing because I struggle with giving books five stars because I feel like, I don't know, maybe something has to be like the best thing I've ever read in my entire life. And that's judging a book too harshly, I feel like, and kind of impossible to hit that. Um, as you saw, I only had the January book as a five star literally so far for my entire year because I've read more of the books than just these. Um, which I don't know if I'll do a wrap up of any of the other books that I read this year. Maybe <laughs> if I have time after I have the baby. Um, but yeah, I hit a point with this of after DNFing July, July, after struggling my way through August, book by Faulkner and then hitting this and I was like god I'm so tired of reading which is sad and I don't want to feel that way because I thoroughly enjoy reading and it kind of like made me curious would any of these have been more palatable without my attitude and my tone if I gave them a shot like via audiobook or something so that's something I may consider in the future um, with books that maybe like I don't feel so pulled into. I'm a big physical book person, um, so we'll see. I think this just like shows me going back and reading a lot of older <laughs> books about topics that are older is difficult. Um, but yeah, I hit a point with this and I was like, why am I forcing myself to read this? I don't want to. I don't care about it. The topic doesn't interest me. I don't care about the war. I don't know about the war. I don't know and can't relate to anything in Ireland or the UK. This doesn't connect with me on any factor, period. So, DNF this. October's book is The October Country by Ray Bradbury. This is actually a collection of, I don't remember how many. 13? 23? I can't remember. <laughs> Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I was wrong. 19, right? 19. These 19 little short stories. Originally, I was not excited to pick this up um, to start it for October. Love the cover though, with like the woman's face and all the imagery. But then when I found out that it was actually a collection of short stories, it kind of got me excited. I've not really read many of those. Um, and I also was excited at the fact of like having shorter snippets of stories given how I have struggled <laughs> Through so many of these. I'm currently having a Braxton Hicks and it's uncomfortable. I gave this a three star um, and the reason why is because I hated a lot of these. <laughs> they weren't awful, some of them dragged on. The intent uh, from my understanding is most of these were supposed to be spooky or creepy um, I didn't find anything to be scary in here. I found two of them that I liked. Um, they were a little off-putting and a little unsettling. Um, I wish I would have wrote the names down of them. The Small Assassin was a good one. And I can't remember... I can't remember the other one. They were interesting, they were weird, they were just uncomfortable to be uncomfortable, but I mean that's kind of the point, I guess is what I gathered from this. Um, so yeah, a collection of short stories that I gave a three star. Now, <laughs> November. 
I DNF'd November and I did not, I didn't even start December. Like, look at this. Does that even look like a good, fun book to read? Because to me, no. <sighs> November. November of the Heart is a romance book. And if something could have ever told me that I would not enjoy this book, for some reason this screams that to me. I, I just, <laughs> I started it and like a couple pages and I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to read this and I'm just not going to go there. Um, I didn't even give it a shot and I don't care and it's a romance and that's not for me. <sighs> and I thought for sure, cause I didn't like, um, I don't know if I said this in this video, but before I tried not to really read the synopsis, I tried to go off of like feeling in what was available, obviously having the months, uh, the month in the title. <laughs> and I guess I thought, I mean, I don't know. I guess I thought at the size of it um, that I would be getting something other than a romance. Because typically your romance are like more like this size, which is what scared me about this one, which is like the one in April. Like a standard smaller paperback is usually romance. But this was, and I just couldn't, yeah. We're just gonna call it on that. I got a couple pages and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> and then I came up to grab the December book, <laughs> which is Wild Decembers by Edna O'Brien. <sighs> and I just grabbed it and looked at it and I was like, I'm not gonna read this. I don't even know what this book is about. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't read it. I open it up and the first thing it says, <laughs> it was the first tractor on the mountain and its arrival <laughs> would be remembered and relayed. The day, the hour, the evening, and the ways crows circled above it, blackening the sky, fringe, soundless, auguring. I don't even know what this is about, what this would be about. Fields mean more than fields, more than life, and more than death too. Yeah, not an ounce of this. Not the picture, not the name, not those two sentences, a couple sentences in there. So the reason I call this a fail is because I just, I didn't even try. I didn't try with these, I didn't try with September's book. I didn't try with November's book, and I didn't even read a word out of December's book. So, was it successful? Sure, maybe, I don't know. I read the majority of them, hated the majority of them, stumbled through the majority of them. I did get a five-star read out of the first one, which I wouldn't have found if I wouldn't have done this challenge, so I guess that's a positive to take away from it. I think the reading challenge taught me a lot <laughs> and like kind of a reminder of the very most basic part of reading is something has to interest you for a reason and just picking a book off a shelf, the likelihood of getting lucky and liking it is probably very extremely slim, especially if it's not in a genre that you enjoy. I don't and probably will never enjoy a romance. I don't and probably will never enjoy a historical fiction or anything about war or something that deep dives into history that isn't teaching me something in a factual way that I have to read for a reason. Like I said, I already have a plan um, for my next year's challenge. I'll probably show those books really quickly. I already have them all sitting to the side um, and I'm excited for it. I almost want to start reading them now, but I'm going to wait. Uh, until the beginning of 2024. Um, but yeah, that was my <laughs> reading a book every month with the name of the month and the title of the book, which I didn't read four of, four of them? Four of them, right? I think four of them in total. Um, 
but yeah i found my five my one and only five star read so far um but like i reiterated already this is only the beginning of september when i'm actually filming this so i could get this done before baby gets here um but yeah <laughs> i think that's where i'm gonna leave this um i'm a lot more hopeful for next year's reading challenge honestly simply based on the fact that these books for next year are all extremely highly rated which you know could mean nothing for me but based on these books that literally none of them besides the January one had I ever heard about before reading this or before taking on this uh reading challenge that I kind of came up with for myself um but yeah I may do a wrap-up of the other books that I read um I'm excited for 2024's challenge and I'll see you guys in that one when I go over everything um but hopefully you babes are well um yeah <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video bye